I'm Philip Duncan and thank you for joining us for our September Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our official business partnership with IBM. Well, there's a lot of attention on the growing and developing El Nino. We've got uh, extra maps about that in a moment. But first of all, let's take a look at the air pressure as we kick off on September the 1st. And we've got high pressure to the east of New Zealand. And the next block of high pressure is over Australia out here into the southeastern corner. There is some low pressure in the subtropics and the Tasman. That's still sort of part of the reason why we don't actually yet have that official El Nino announcement. We're still seeing a little bit too much low pressure cloud and rain into the uh, Tasman area and the eastern side of Australia. New Zealand's actually starting a drier trend now, but this weekend and the start of next week does kick off with a bit of rain around the North Island and the West Coast. So let's have a look at El Nino. So officially we are still in an El Nino alert, which means we're very close to it being announced officially, but not quite there. So this is where we're currently at, just a little bit north of that uh, line, that dot there, the circle. Uh, to the north of that, that's when we get further into El Nino. So if you think of it as being like a mountain that we're climbing, we've only just started. And so for the people that are saying, why isn't it here yet? You've been talking about it since the end of last year. They take a long time to develop. And so we've been gradually getting there and you should be ramping up a little more in the coming months. And then you reach the peak around December or January. And then of course, you've got to come back down that mountain. So El Nino conditions are just developing, peaking in summer, and then likely to ease at some point across 2024. So we're only just getting started, which is why some places are only now starting to feel that drier change coming in. So let's take a look at the international models and they are certainly saying at the moment, leaning towards El Nino. And if you take a look at where we're heading later in the year, even stronger into that El Nino side of things. So the uh, foot's on the accelerator for the next few months and then getting into January, hopefully starting to ease back, although we won't really notice that probably until sometime in autumn or maybe even winter next year. So still a while to go. Now the sea surface temperatures, this is how we start to measure El Nino. One half of it is measuring it here where it warms up. Four degrees warmer than average in some locations at the moment in the eastern tropical Pacific. Uh, that's one part of it. The other part of it is what happens to the atmosphere over in our part of the world. And that's still not really fully into that El Nino side of things. And having warmer than average sea conditions around Eastern Australia and also warmer out here, that doesn't really tie in with a strong El Nino. So we're still seeing a little bit of change to come through. Let's have a look now locally at our marine heat wave in New Zealand. This is from the Moana project. You can see this for free online. Uh, a lot of places in green, that's good. We wanna see more of that, but the yellow is still there. That is a moderate uh, marine heat wave continuing. And then of course, we've got a strong area here around Eastern Bay of Plenty and also uh, surprisingly around Stewart Island. Been a fair bit of high pressure just to the south of New Zealand. That's limiting some of that colder air and colder winds blowing off from the Southern Ocean. So let's get into the part that you're probably most interested in, and that's how is this month shaping up as far as air pressure is concerned? And of course, we kick off here week one, September the 1st, and we've got that area of low pressure I just talked about in the Tasman Sea and up here into the subtropics. So that is all low pressure, but high pressure to the east, down to the south, and out over Australia. And also what you're noticing in the weeks ahead, and you'll see this in a second, the building blocks of these high pressure zones starting to really dominate the top half of our screen, while the lower half has more low pressure, which means there's a little bit more uh, uniformity, if you like, more, more of a pattern to all the chaos that we've been getting. So by week two, now you start to see what I'm talking about, this block of high pressure, Indian Ocean, Australia, Tasman Sea, and then across New Zealand and out to the east. Low pressure to the south, so Southland, Otago, still a little bit vulnerable to low pressure. And of course, the odd southerly will still come into New Zealand. So therefore, eastern areas will get a little bit of rain, but not very much. It's looking quite dry. And as we get into the middle of the month, week three, and this is moving in towards the second half of the month, still a lot of high pressure, very powerful block of high pressure here over New Zealand. And a little bit of a break maybe in Australia, um, low pressure coming through a wee bit further to the north, but it's still pretty much high pressure and control and the next block of high pressure out there in the Indian Ocean moving in. So we are certainly seeing more high pressure as we go through the weeks ahead. And of course, 
Spring is usually a windy time of the year, but a lot of the windiest weather at the moment is just down to the south of Aussie and New Zealand. So let's have a look at, uh, well, we'll have a look at the rainfall coming up in a second, but let's have a look at the soil moisture levels at the moment. Interestingly, parts of Hawke's Bay uh, and up to the north there around Gisborne and East Cape, you're seeing areas that are now drying out. They are below normal for this time of the year. So after that incredibly wet start to this year, the well, first several months, we're now starting to see that El Nino trend starting to dry out the eastern areas, at least of the North Island. There is a little bit of rain coming through this weekend. In the south, Marlborough and Canterbury, the two areas that are looking a little bit dry. But then if Canterbury's a little bit unusual, got this drier spot to the south and then to the north, wetter than average. And that's the rain that fell in July and early August still sort of showing up around Otago and parts of Canterbury. So let's have a look at the rain for the next two weeks coming in. And as you can see, uh, in the areas with the white boxes, that's where the least amount of rain is expected. So around the Australian deserts, dry, uh, that is normal. But what isn't normal with El Nino is seeing these big areas of rain, like that one there around Sydney, with potentially anywhere between 100 and 200 millimetres over the next couple of weeks. That is not like El Nino at all. So you're seeing a fair bit of rain hugging the eastern side of Australia. But for New Zealand, it looks a lot more like an El Nino pattern, where the eastern side is mostly dry, and most of the heavy rain there around uh, Fiordland. So here's a closer version of that map for New Zealand. So these eastern areas, this is the pale blue area at the bottom of the scale. And again, this is another provider with the same scale with two sets of blue in it, bottom and end. And so the heaviest rain here, surrounded by purple and red, so that is the, the really heavy stuff, and the lighter falls along that eastern side of New Zealand. Now, a little bit of rain up here, not much, but 60 millimetres or so over the next couple of weeks. Most of that is probably coming over the next few days as that low moves through. And Hawke's Bay, you're really the borderline between where that rain is falling and where it dries out. So let's have a look at the bigger trend, the departure from normal maps from IBM. And what you're seeing here is pretty similar to where we've actually been for the last month, that it's close to average, but leaning a little bit drier, most of these uh, regions. And in fact, even here, you can still see the effects of uh, a southerly coming in and some areas here leaning a little bit wetter. But basically, you're in the normal zone, but slightly drier than average across the country. In October, again, another sign of a bit of a southerly coming in there to Hawke's Bay. It's only leaning a little bit wetter, not much. So don't don't you know worry too much about that. And down here, similar story. So close to normal, some areas may be a little bit wetter, but most places leaning a little bit drier. And we get through to November, and again, that drier trend still leaning in across most of the country, except the lower portion of the South Island. That's only a little bit wetter, by the way. That's not hugely different to your normal monthly rainfall. Uh, so it's not as extreme as you might think, but it is still leaning drier. And over those months ahead, you're going to notice it more and more. So conserve water now, believe it or not. Even if it's been muddy where you still are now, conserve water. Let's have a look at the temperatures and then we're nearly done. Uh, across the next month, parts of Australia are certainly a little bit cooler than average. Not much though. This is the scale here. So if you're in that blue or yellow area, you're pretty much bang on average. So Australia, yes, uh, a little bit cooler in some spots, but really it should be about normal for this time of the year, whereas New Zealand leans a little bit warmer than average, about half a degree warmer than average as we go through the next month. And then this is spring, September, October, November, both nations leaning a little bit warmer than average, but not extremely warm. Hopefully um, we're not gonna be seeing any massive heat waves, but I do think as we go through into spring, Australia does have a higher risk of them due to those big high pressure zones. And New Zealand could get some windy westerlies out of Aussie this summer. That could be a real concern because that can be super heated. So keep an eye out for any big nor'westers out of the Australian desert this summer. But for now, as you saw with some of those greener areas in the rain maps, uh, there are some signs that still a little bit of life coming out of the Southern Ocean. So El Nino, which is all about the tropics and what's going on around there, um, good to see some life in the Southern Ocean, which could keep some rain coming into the New Zealand area over spring. That is all from me for this month. Back again in a month's time, taking a look at the rest of the El Nino conditions. And of course, if El Nino is announced 
uh, in the month of September, we'll do a special update on that. It is possible that it could just be only a couple of weeks away, but with all that rain around Eastern Australia, that is just complicating it a little bit for our part of the world. That's all from me. We'll see you later on.